Hi, I'm Simon Hartley. And I'm Helen Glenmartin. Welcome back to Pep Talks. Helen, today we're joined by a very good friend of mine, Kenny Atkinson, who has been awarded many, many Michelin stars. He's an incredible chef, and I've, I've had the enormous pleasure of uh, eating uh, Kenny's food several times. Um, Kenny, this is a really, really tough time for everybody in your industry, but I know it's a tough time for you at the moment. Um, and you've got a huge challenge in front of you, haven't you? No, we have. Um, I think being forced to close for three months, even longer, with no revenue coming in and with wages to pay, rent to pay, outgoings to pay. Um, you know, it's very challenging. It's very worrying. Um, but it is what it is. And I think at the moment we just need to work out the positives because uh, it is going to have to finish. We are going to be back open soon. Um, it's just getting planning and being ready to, to be open and, and start all over again. Yeah. When we were chatting the other day, you said, you know, there's, there's kind of a mountain to climb in front of you. You know, you're going to come out of this with significant debt, mm -hmm. but actually you, you also know you've been through tougher challenges. Um, and when you kicked off, that was probably a tougher challenge than you're going to have when you, when you come out, whenever that happens to be in, in several months time. Well, exactly. When, when all this happened, obviously, you know, the panic hits in and you think, Oh my God, what's going to happen? Uh, we're going to lose our business. We're going to get ourselves into a lot of debt. But I think taking a little bit of time out and actually thinking about it and thinking about when we first opened up back in 2014, we we opened up with over 150,000s worth of debt anyway. Um, and we had a business that didn't have a reputation. Uh, it had never been a restaurant before. It was a grade one listed building. Um, we had a team that wasn't a strong team. It was There was no structure in place. And we had to build over the past few years to to develop the team that we have now and the structure that we have now with that come, has come accolades, you know, one of, one of the best dining destinations of the UK. So now this has all happened um, and literally we have to start all over again. But the, the difference now is, yes, we are going to open up with a lot of debt, as with millions of other businesses around the country, but we have a team in place. We have the structure in place. We have the accolades in place. We have the reputation in place. So almost, so for us, yeah, it's back into a race again, but this time, you know, we're going to have a head start rather than, a standard start like we did uh, back in 2014. Mm, absolutely. Kenny, how do you plan then to leverage your strengths to recreate and reinforce your business and come out the other side better than before? I think the plan was maintain the team. I think that was the key thing. And when all this happened and I had friends of mine who were making redundancies, um, mass redundancies across the businesses and, and, and you ring up with these guys asking for some advice and, and it, you start thinking, am I, am I doing something wrong? I, I, I don't want to make redundancies just yet because if I make redundancies, then it's not going to fix the problem. I'm still going to have to pay them their month's salary and I'm still going to have to pay them a redundancy fee at the end of that because the majority of my team have been with me for four or five years, some of them even from the very first year. So we had to sort of step back and, and wait for all the information to come through off the government before we made any rash decisions. And it, it, and it is nervous because, you know, you, you sat there with, no revenue coming through and you've got a wage bill of 45,000 to pay at the end of the month. You've got your rent due, your corporation tax due and your VAT bill due and you've got your supply bills due. And you think, oh my God, what are we going to do? But you, you've got to, we had to just sort of hold our nerve a little bit and we knew there was going to be government support. There had to be government support. And I think what the government's done has been amazing. Um, it, it's never going to be perfect, but what I think what they've done is it just took a little bit of pressure off us with, with furlough and a and, and little bit of government grants where it's just going to help tie us over that a little bit longer. Um, but the focus is that, you know, if we can maintain the levels of staffing that we have, that we've spent a lot of investment into and time and, and trying to maintain them. So at least then when we do open up, you know, it's there, it's ready. We have a restaurant, it's got the accolades, it's got the reputation, the staff are eager and desperate to come back to work. And I've been in touch with them every couple of days, just talking to them talking to the chefs, you know, come up with ideas, even if it's just by group chat, just keeping the ideas going rather than sitting there at home just watching box sets all day. And, and, and it's very easy to get into that mentality of being lazy and being, you know, I don't have to worry about work for three months. Yet we don't have to worry about work for three months, but it doesn't mean we don't think about it and think about when we do reopen up, what we're going to open up with. Is, is it new menus? Is it new ideas? Is it new pricing? So you have to keep that conversation going a little bit just to keep a little bit of sanity uh, and just keep the focus on the light of the end tunnel that's going to happen hopefully very soon. Mm. Yeah, when we were chatting on uh, on Friday, you and I, you, you were talking about 
maybe um, creating dishes at a different price point, creating taster menus at a different price point, because it might not be that everybody comes back in and they all want high end meals. It might be that without reducing quality, you can make a different kind or put together a different kind of offering for people. Um, and maybe actually attract people who haven't eaten Michelin star food before. Yeah, I, th I think we have to be very realistic. You know, be before this has all happened, you know, we, we, we had tier menus that were 95, 105 pound, you know, and the one thing we can't do when we reopen is is to devalue the brand that we've built and the quality of ingredients that we have we purchased, the suppliers that we use. So when we reopen up, there is going to be a lot of people who, may not have that flexible cash that they used to have you know whether they've had to tighten their belts over the past three months so as a business we have to sort of reflect that and think do we need to be a little bit more creative and and, and yet it comes back down to having cheaper menus but not cheaper produce if that makes sense you know let's let's do smaller tier menus or let's just do a four four set menu that we can get in for 40 45 pound at least if i don't make a lot of money on the food but they're going to be buying wine you know i've got i've got about forty five thousand pounds worth of wine set upstairs uh, waiting to be sold so if if i can get them in now uh, and on that sort of smaller more price friendly menu they're going to spend wine and then they're going to leave with an experience that they're going to want to come back again and hopefully when this economy hopefully gets back to being what it used to be then you know they've already had the confidence of, of dying in the house of tight before that would never ever probably go before because they always had this vision that it was an expensive restaurant yet yeah, but not the cheapest of restaurants but you know it's about the whole package and the experience that we offer and um, you know we want to make sure that we offer our staff a good salary for what they do and the work they do so that has to reflect in the price that we that we charge so but yeah it's just been a bit more creative with chefs you know we can be creative with things you know we can do menus that are still exciting to have some uh visual fantastic look at but let's do them at a bit of a, a cheaper price to encourage people to come in and and you know keep the business going as strong as and as best we can yeah i don't absolutely. think any industry has a silver bullet for managing this crisis but no. the restaurant industry is it has the extra complexities i think of you know if we come back with social distancing and i mean there's a lot of sensational things written at the moment but how do you still create that uh, ambiance and that experience that you're talking about for people and yet you know operate within the parameters that may come back that, that that's that's going to be the challenge because i think the part of what makes good restaurants is the ambience you know that busy environment you know it, the hustle and bustle um and it, it is going to be a challenge and i think it's i think it's already been said that the hospitality industry will probably be one of the last industries that will be able to be allowed to open up again mm -hmm. there is going to be a bit of a hangover if people come to restaurants thinking oh that table's a bit closer to us and or how many chefs have actually touched this plate of food and, and it's going to be a lot of that where people are going to be a little bit nervous which is i think only the government can do that to the best of the can by eradicating this virus as quick as possible or to come up with an antidote as quick as possible um i think our challenge will be is that you know we still have to operate as a business we still have overheads we have to pay whether we just have to sort of just remove a few tables at the restaurant for the for the first few months and just spread them tables out a little bit so we can still so rather than doing uh, 60 covers on the or 70 covers on a Saturday, we'll just have to survive with 50 covers or 40 covers uh, and stagger those times rather than from being from 5 o'clock to 8.30, yeah, let's, let's stagger that to 9.30 so we can create a bit more gaps between tables. So then, you know, it's, it's not just safe for the guests, but also safe for our staff as well, which is important. Um, but yeah, that's going to be a challenge, not just for us, but for everybody, especially with small restaurants. Um, that need them covers to survive. You know, we've got a huge five-story building. We have a big area downstairs. We have a, a, a quite a large restaurant with a, a separate room as well. So we can utilize that to our advantage. Maybe not with covers that we'd love to do in order to keep the money coming in. We just, but we're just going to have to use this as baby steps just to get back into, you know, almost like that slow jog before you sprint. We just got to get into that motion again and just once we get the confidence of guests once the staff feel confident as well once this this horrible virus is eradicated then hopefully we'll just get back to normal and and hopefully the good thing come out this with a bit more appreciation of what you know not just restaurants bars hairdressers shops clothes shops that we sort of take for granted but now that we haven't got these luxuries you know it makes you think mm -hmm. i think it is really important at this time to circle your customers and 
and really listen. I think we're all trying to do the same thing, but really listen to what they think will happen afterwards. And actually, you know, you probably will get families wanting to go out together and, and sit together, you know, where normally people would want to maybe be on their own or that. So there will be other opportunities, I believe. And I think the mm -hmm. restaurant business, you know, it's not just about the meal. It's, it's us talking about where we're going to eat, getting ready to do it, and, and talking about the food afterwards. But I think at the moment, and that's what I'm just wondering, what are you doing to kind of connect with your customers at the moment when they can't come to your restaurant? How are you keeping it out there? Are you doing videos or Instagram or, or what kind of social digital tools are you using? Well, at the moment, we're just starting off slowly because we've still got a long time before we, we reopen. So I think we need to set that time frame where once we know that restrictions are going to start being lifted, that's when we'll start pushing things a bit more, whether, like you said, social video, uh, media videos. Um, at the moment, we're just slowly starting doing some dishes on, on uh, Instagram of the dishes that we did back in 2014, 15, 16. Looking back at what we used to do and, and almost realising that, not just for, for us, but for guests as well, to see the dishes that we did four years ago to the dishes that we're doing now, how far we've progressed. Um, you know, we still have uh, still have emails coming through all the time with regards to when we're going to open, can we take reservations with September? So we still have members of the team, my restaurant manager still coming in and making contact with the emails for guests, reassuring them that, you know, hopefully we're all going to be, we'll definitely be open by September. I cannot imagine this not being open in September. Um, but just communicating with them and, and reassuring that anybody who has got reservations that you know, they'll, they'll be cancelled and moved. There's going to be no cancellation fees. Anybody who's got vouchers, you know, we're making personal contact with them, seeing that it can be extended so there's no need to worry or panic. Um, but I think once we have that restrictions lifted um, and once we have a little bit of normality back in life, and because and, I think I still think that hospitality is going to be the last industry that will have them and uh, restrictions lifted, as with sports events as well. And um, once we have that date in mind, then we can start hitting social media, start contacting our guests, you know, and just trying to drive as much publicity as possible. Because at the moment, really, we're, we're supposed to be self isolating and, and staying safe, and, and that's what we need to be doing at the moment. Mm -hmm. There's a there's a real kind of need, I think, at the moment, you and I have talked about this as well, to make sure you are doing the right thing um, mm -hmm. by your team, by your customers, by your suppliers. Um, and there are lots of people who might start to sacrifice a couple of those because the, the finances are shouting. Yeah. You know, the finance director or, you know, the banks or whatever it is are kind of jumping up and down. But, I mean, we've been talking about the, the need to maintain those relationships because they're incredibly important relationships, aren't they? They are what your business is built on. Exactly. When, when it's, a, it's a domino effect. So if, if, if we don't get paid, then the suppliers don't get paid. It, and it, it knocks on with those things. So when, when all this happened, um, a lot of my friends were saying, don't pay anybody, don't pay your suppliers, don't pay your rent. You know, you just keep every bit of cash you have in the bank. And, and that's what we did really for the first few years until we knew what was going to happen what the bigger picture was going to look like once the the government grants came through and, and where we knew we were financially so the main thing was you know we could support staff that was the main thing uh, make sure their jobs are safe make sure they're going to get money coming through whether through furlough or, or support whatever and then with suppliers yet yeah, we, we owe suppliers money so rather than not paying nothing what we did was that we rang everybody and said okay we're all in the same boat yeah, I can't imagine what's going to be for you guys. You must be owed thousands from other restaurants. So what we're going to do, we're going to give you something rather than nothing. And once this ties over, then we can get these payments paid straight over again. Same with, with rent. I know a lot of places aren't paying their rent. We paid half our rent because it's not landlord's fault this has happened. It's not our fault this has happened. But, you know, if, you, if you've got some finances there, let's just pay 50% of something rather than 100% of nothing because these guys have still got bills to pay. And if my fish supplier or my veg supplier can't pay their bills, then they're going to get busted. And when we do reopen, then we've lost that link of five years or seven years of, of close relationship of working with each other where they know what we want and we know what, what they can supply us. It will be ruined if we're not careful. So it's, it's, a, it's a horrible thing at the moment, the way it's happening in this industry, but we have to support each other as best as we can in order to get through this. And we will get through it. Yeah. Just a matter of time and when. Kenny, what's harder, um, cooking in the restaurant or or being on cooking for a great British um, menu? Is that like, you know, when you're on TV and the pressure is that, <laughs> is that worse? I have to ask you that because I, I watched a couple of episodes then. So is that is that more pressure when you're actually cooking for a panel and you're on that TV 
aspect that when you're in the kitchen and you're you're I, I did say yeah that yeah, the, the, the pressure on on doing some of my great British menu uh for the two years I did it compared to see I cook in the restaurant is I, I can't describe it the pressure is just so immense it's draining um when you're in a restaurant and you're in your own kitchen you've got your team around you you know and if something goes wrong you can do it again and 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 in the restaurant, you're you're part of a, a team that will do elements of each dish. So you, you know, one guy might cook the fish, one guy might do the garnish, one guy may bring up the the puree or whatever. So, that, but in in the Great British menu, it's just you. you. You've got nowhere to hide, except you've got ten cameras on you, <laughs> and you've got and you've got one hit only. And it, if you get that hit wrong, yeah, you're either going home or you've literally just showing yourself up as a as a Michelin star chef I made a mistake in front of millions and millions of people so um I was very aware of that um you know it, I think the days of filming and in in between cooking as well you you don't see it on 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 the shows now but in the days that we did it was you know in the middle of a, a serious point where you have to be focused on what you did and you were getting pulled away for little chats off camera how do you think it's going how was your competitors doing and all you were thinking about is your lambs in the oven or me, me fishes on the stone. No, I really can't be doing this conversation, but you have to, it's a TV show and you have to accept what it is. Uh, and without it, my career wouldn't probably be what it is now. So, but the pressure of cooking for the panel, the pressure of cooking in front of millions of people on, in, in front of a studio audience, sorry, a studio um, crew, uh, and obviously other, other chefs as well, um, waiting for you to, to mess up because if you mess up, it makes great TV, doesn't it? So yeah, it's yeah. hard really hard but do you know what it is I, I, I thrived on it, it it's I, I never looked at it as though oh, I didn't want to be here because I watched the show um as a child growing up as a young chef growing up sorry and I just when I had the opportunity of doing it it was an opportunity where I thought I'm not going to let this go you know I, I had an opportunity where this young lad from Newcastle who's never done tv before um yeah I've got a mission star in the restaurant but no one had ever heard of me outside the industry uh, to then have that platform to cook on TV in front of millions of people in their own homes um, mm. was just a, an opportunity that you just cannot turn down and an opportunity that was I was refusing to let go and I was determined to win the first time and come back the second year and determined even more to do it again. I read that book, uh, Anthony Bourdain, Kitchen Confidential, and it <laughs> amazing, but it gave me a huge respect for chefs and I do, that's what I was thinking about when I, that you know when you're on something like that you know and you 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 know we believe that chefs are very passionate about what they mm. do and they have to be and i know anyone who asked him about you know working in the industry or that he would say to them go give up your time for free first because this is like really difficult and i know you came up through the ranks working in your uh, uncle's hotel or working with your mm -hmm. uncle um so you kind of have to you know you have to have a passion whether it's on comes across on TV or in your restaurant. I think, how do you keep that passion going in these times of crisis where everything has stopped for you? you... I think it. I think looking back of of what we did in the past, um, times, especially over the past six years we've been open. Looking back of the dishes that we've done, the things that we've achieved, and I've done little posts on Instagram about these as well. Looking back. And actually getting to really appreciate the accolades that we've actually achieved at House of Tides, where at the time when you when you're sort of in that momentum of going and yeah, we've got a mission start, fantastic, great champions outright, tomorrow's a new deal, let's start all over again. And we'd we'd never take it for granted, you know, we look at that every day and you think, well, this is what we have for. But I, I don't think we ever really, really, really sat back and appreciated it. And I think now with lockdown, I think now with sitting at home, you get to really reflect on achievements and you think, wow, I can't believe we really did that. Wow, I can't really believe we were voted twenty best restaurants in the UK when you look at how many phenomenal restaurants in this country. And then you start looking back at, at past dishes that we've done and you think, oh my God, that looks really dated compared to what we do now. So it, it sort of gives you that sort of revitalization of, of passion that we're doing. I can't really get back again. I can't wait to start pushing again. Um, talking to the guys, you know, let, let's come up with a snack today. Let's come up with a star. Let's come up with a dessert. And, and just bouncing ideas over, over and texting, reading books. You just keep that passion going because if, if we don't, then you know, then what's, what's it all for? You know, it's, for me, it's not just a passion, it's a lifestyle, it's, it's my career, it's my job, it's, it's my livelihood and, and I have to keep passionate in order to keep driving the team forward and, you know, for me, I still feel like I've got more to achieve. Uh, there's this itch the way I just know that we can do more. Um, 
we just just touched the surface of what we've achieved in six years and we still have another 12, 13 years left on the lease. So, you know, it's still a long way to go yet and, and, and I won't be happy until we've achieved what I feel we need to achieve. I think when we were chatting the other day about how you get through those challenges, the tough challenges, uh, for me, when, you, when you're driven by passion, you've got a, a far greater chance of getting through whatever challenges come your way. Um, and I know over the years when we've been chatting, that's something that's just, it, it's leapt out at me, you know, the, the level mm. of passion that you've got and how you instill passion in the guys around you. Kenny, absolutely brilliant. It's always fantastic to talk to you. Really, really enjoyed catching up on this. Helen, thank you very much as well. Thank you guys at home. And uh, we'll see you guys again for another episode of Pep Talks. Take care.